when she passed, the festival went with her and that showed that it was largely a one woman operation. It was a grassroots festival. And I was always impressed by the kind of party atmosphere that they had here going here at the hotel. You had people traveling from different places and whatnot. And they had an older demographic. It was always based, based primarily in ballads and blues and whatnot. Uh, my name is Nick Houston. I was familiar with the festival through my aunt, who was uh, one of the vendors from the inception. She worked with uh, Ronnie and um, her husband. She encouraged her family members to come participate in the middle of February Jazz Fest. And last year, there was no Jazz Fest. And, and it was a sinking feeling. I, I just didn't know why I felt that way or you know or what what came over me but then I realized it was just the simple fact that there was no jazz festival. I began the question well gee whiz these people who were part of Ronnie's organization looks like they're not going to bring that thing back. We knew that in order to do this the way it had to be done. This wasn't going to be a commercial venture. It needed to be on the not-for-profit side. And Paul Carr was part of these discussions and his, his, his education program, the Jazz Academy, had a 501c3. So it became obvious that this perhaps we could do this through his 501c3 as the producer. I was the, the, the founder's saxophone player, so I, I was very close, um, uh, closely, intimately involved with the festival because I also picked the, uh, uh, the finalists for the scholarship program. So I knew about the festival, uh, and I, knew, I knew, knew the festival, and I knew how important the festival was to the jazz community, and most importantly, jazz education. I'm Mike Gurrier, Mr. Jazz from WRII in Richmond, Virginia, uh, formerly of WWOZ in New Orleans. And uh, it's a great pleasure to be here at the Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival with their reincarnation event. We're looking for a lot of fine things to come in the future. We all know that uh, the arts in general are uh, succumbing to a lack of support from uh, local, state, and federal government entities. And it's the people out here in the trenches and in the front lines that are the ones that are planting the seeds. They're uh, germinating them, invigorating them, nurturing them, and uh, keeping forth the uh, jazz essence that is such a fabric of the American culture. I am now volunteering and looking forward to uh, the future with the uh, Mid-Atlantic Jazz Festival. I think the greatest surprise was the seeing how happy people were, the the and the and the people coming back to the festival and how happy they were to have the festival come back. and then there's those that can tell you the history from from the beginning to the end and uh, when they all come together and meet they like to share that information so I think it's wonderful they get to talk about it and you know who they've seen and and then talk to other people and and, and just to see things grow uh, within the jazz community so I love it so the, pro the problem that you're having is probably that your read is too soft for the tip opening mm -hmm. and you're not doing overtones off a low B flat can you do that I mean, I, my thing with singers is that I think, I mean, I don't want to get into it, but I think all singers need to use more air. Sound like you know, if, if you watch... <laughs> sound like a Buddy Rich or whoever it is that you're trying to emulate. You can't do it. So it behooves you to, to check out what they're doing, try to execute some of the things you hear them doing that are, you know, part of the drumming tradition. And, and um, it's going to come out sounding like you anyway. Dear God of love, God Almighty, God up above, 
Please look down and see my people through in a plane flying too high with some gal in the sky. It's not my idea of something I just would love to do. difficult music. I started with classical for 11 years and I just switched to jazz okay. last year. There's so many ways you can interpret it yourself instead of just having to like listen to what other people tell you to do. I started jazz at the end of last year. I got recruited into the jazz band because a bunch of other trumpets left so they put me in it. And what, what are your feelings about the music? I like it a lot. It's really different from classical which I used to play but it's fun. Actually Jazz Academy is um, um, it's, it's modeled after something that I attended when I was in Houston, the Summer Jazz Workshop. So as a, as a student there, I, you know, I got so much out of it uh, when, I was in, uh, when I was a kid in Houston. So, and it was nothing in this area like that. So it's, it's actually modeled after that, you know, with some you know, uh, ramifications for today's kid. <laughs> I think I'm growing an audience. Uh, because some of these kids are going to be, um, um, you know, great, you know, supporters of jazz, and some of them are players. So, and uh, I tell you, it's it's really it's it's a really good feeling to hear something that a guy that a girl that you've te that you've taught, and they go on to be uh, to play jazz. I'm 10 years old. Inspiring, I'm happy. One of the things that inspires me is I continue to meet and hear young musicians. And you'll say to yourself, well, gee whiz. Like if you go to some of these schools or whatever, and you, and you hear, you, you see the energy with which these kids put into some, put into this music, and you say to yourself, well, gee whiz, if this thing is dead, how is it these young people are still interested in playing this music? Jazz is never dead, and jazz is never dying. It's always, uh, it, it's always around. Uh, jazz is, you know, in my opinion, is is always has been kind of a struggle. So, you know, so, and that doesn't mean that that doesn't, and I think that's what makes the mute that helps to make the music so unique into what it is. And you left me here behind, so don't touch me. hands anywhere near me don't touch me don't touch me don't touch me thank you very much we love you Ronnie